Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna be a very interesting one. Me and Cole are flying to Kirkland, Washington to pick up a new daily driver. I'm gonna go look at a E92 M3. Uh, let's hope that it's as good as it looks in the ad. It's substantially cheaper than the rest of the market. And I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that. I don't wanna speak too soon, but uh, wish me luck. I'm going to SFO right now. Um, and then we fly out at 7.30, land in Seattle at nine something, and then we'll be at the dealership in the morning. Good morning. I am not in Kirkland, Washington, as you will notice. Uh, um, the car sold. So about 10 minutes after I made that last clip, I got on the phone right about to leave for the airport. I said, hey, you guys still have my car. They're like, uh, somebody's going to buy it right now. I was like, okay, what the fuck? How about plane tickets? And I'll pop the text message up right here. Uh, they said, <laughs> Mike, you know, see you at 9 a.m. Here's the address. Come get the car. Anyways, that's not what happened. Apparently they sold it and that car's a no-go. Um, so, still looking, but today we're doing something not very fun, not looking forward to it, but it must be done, and I'm really hoping it fixes the idle issue on the E36. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the car around, and maybe it'll do it, so hopefully I can capture what I'm referring to on video. All right. As you can see, it idles fine. We'll wait for it to, you know, chill out for a second, and then I will, uh, I'll back it out. And you'll hear when the clutch engages, it dips pretty hard. It doesn't die, but it does dip. So that's what we're hoping to solve today. Really don't want to run the car too long because I got to get in the engine bay in a second. Uh, ICV is somewhere under the manifold in this general area. I have not seen it yet, uh, but I think we'll be taking the airbox out. Um, we'll also be taking out the MAF, this intake elbow, and probably the throttle body to get to the ICV. All right, so there's gonna be a 10 down here and a 10 on the other side. This is for the airbox. This kind of holds this whole piece to, uh, like onto the airbox. And this is just gonna be moved out of the way because you need to get the airbox out, obviously. Okay, both those tens are out so you can take this and literally just move it out of the way. I'll get a different angle for you so you can see, but that moves that way from the airbox. Come around to the airbox here, up by the mass airflow sensor, you got two little metal clamps, one on either side. These are super easy, you can do them with your fingers. Just like that, it's unplugged. So you can separate this from the MAF uh, when you're ready to pull the intake box out. Now if we take a look here, we've got the flashlight, you come right above the alternator. You'll see that little nut that holds that sensor in. I believe that's a 10 as well. You can get that off. Okay. There's that sensor there. So that is out. This is disconnected. I'm pretty sure that is it actually. Let's try and give this a tug. The only other thing is this guy here. This is connected to this ducting. So just keep that in mind. Try and kind of finesse it out of there. This just gotta get separated from the math. Like that now. Airbox should come out. There she goes. Just gotta get it disconnected from there. I don't know if this is a M3 thing that it gets these vents. Uh oh, gasket or something fell. Okay, that's uh, the airbox there. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, oh, it's right there. That's what it was. I assume this is a gasket for some part of the airbox. How's the filter look? Doesn't look too bad. Well, that looks pretty good, actually. That doesn't need to be changed. Not right now, at least. Probably just leave that plugged in. I guess we can take it out. I'll just move that over here. Now these, obviously super easy, just to get this off. We can take this off all in one piece, but I prefer to do it separately here. Okay, that's that for the math. Just another hose clamp here. We'll loosen this up. Get that guy off, you just pull it super hard. Okay, now here's the hose. You'll see it right now. It's cracked, 
don't know if you can see it, but I'll pull it off. The big crack in there. Look at that. Separated. Same with this guy. Just pull it off. You can see that one's not cracked, so I didn't come off easily. This is a common leak spot. I didn't get to smoke test the car, so I'm not sure if this is leaking at all, um, but we're just kind of going process of elimination here. This is easy enough, simple enough to change out, uh, whereas the ICV should just be cleaned and stuff anyways. I didn't buy a new ICV, I bought a new hose. You can see how much grime is actually in this car. Oh, I just... Okay, that will be part of the lip there. I'm gonna have to buy another one of these. I really don't want to because they're kind of expensive, but this guy is needing some TLC. I think I'm gonna zip tie it back together. I'm not even joking. Uh, yeah, you can see it's pretty, pretty dirty here. I actually replaced uh, this guy not too long ago. This is uh, intake for the alternator, I guess. Um, here's the deal. I don't want to really take the ICV out unless I was taking the manifold off. And the reason I'm not taking the manifold off is because I don't have all the parts to kind of refresh everything underneath it, if that makes sense. So what I might do is just try and replace this hose. Yes, I would like to clean the ICV. Uh, depending on the severity of the job here, we may not do that. But I think the next order of business in order to actually access the hose for the ICV would be to remove the throttle body here. So far I've done this whole thing with a 10. <laughs> so hopefully this is a 10 as well. Yep, okay. There's a second one, but this is something I haven't done. And there she blows. All right, so there is in fact a little hose clamp that holds on this guy down here. I don't know, you can see it here. You just need to follow it. I cannot, I'm not taking the manifold off because I don't have the parts, <laughs> um, but the hose clamp is like right there. I don't, yeah, you really can't see it. I'm sorry, I wanted this to be a good DIY here, but I don't know how to show you. People say you can kind of take the oil filter out um, that's kind of extra just to get that little bit of clearance because as long as you take that out You can kind of just move your hand down here I want to try and get this out It'd be so much nicer. Just replace all the lines under the manifold um, But that's not gonna happen today at least Here's a new hose. Go ahead and rip the tag off of here. Um, we're just gonna reuse this hose clamp here and hopefully this will go on without much issue. I can already tell if you look at these two, um, that might be an issue. This guy is smaller, but this one has less flex. This kind of has some more polyurethane feel to it. I'm gonna put the flashlight in my mouth, super unsanitary, but uh, let's go. The trick is to hopefully get a screwdriver in there and tighten it up. All right, so as you probably saw, I've been struggling with this whole fucking thing, <laughs> um, but I got it all sorted. Everything is back, engine bays, Put back together, air box, mass airflow sensor, the elbow. Elbow, the the new ICV hose was actually a total bitch to get into the little nipple for that elbow so you can actually 
remove the nipple from the elbow and then put the nipple into that ICV hose and then put it into the elbow, if that makes sense. Makes it way easier. I got a shower too, this is fucked. The only way to get a real world test here is to drive it. Probably should shut the hood first though. Please don't come down this way. I'm trying to do a test here. Come on, man. All right, let me just see. Push the clutch in. Oh, I think the idle's good now. Oh, I didn't. I didn't fix the idle. Something happened. All right, so hopefully it runs a little bit better from now on. But to be honest, I think I'm just trying to convince myself that it does. Uh, I think it's running better. I, I don't think I'm making this up, but I feel like it doesn't smell as badly of fuel. The idle issue is kind of still there, or it was when it was cold. But now that it's warmed up, obviously that's, I didn't have the, the idle issue when it was warm before either. But um, yeah, I, I can't tell if it runs better. If anything, this was a, a good way to kind of knock the ICV hose that, like you'll see. See, it didn't drop idle that time. Sometimes it drops idle, I can't figure out why. But uh, it does drop idle and I can't figure out why. Sometimes it needs to like save itself. It pulled harder. You know what? I feel like I'm not making this up. The car pulls a little harder. God, it never sounds good when I do that. All right, realistically, I probably would have gotten a better result if I had taken the ICV out and cleaned it, but it's such a pain to get in there. I figure when I take the manifold off, we replace a gasket for the manifold and we do the PCV system and we do all the vacuum lines that are under there, I can tackle that. So I didn't do the car any harm by fixing this, but it definitely didn't fix my issue. I think the car runs a tad bit better. I could be making that up, I have no idea. I just wanted to make sure the car was somewhat dialed for whenever I need to drive it as I'm in limbo mode looking for this E92 M3 or E90 whatever shows up first. So all in all I ruined a nice sticky shirt and I replaced the ICV hose. You guys saw that there was a crack in it earlier so I'm hoping that you know at least doing that kind of eliminates that knocks it out of the park. The only thing we didn't do obviously is clean the ICV. Now if I would have cleaned the ICV, I'm sure it would have run a little bit better. Fuck, it might have even fixed the idle control issue, but I just need to address that later down the road. I cannot uh, kind of take the whole manifold off just for that right now. Yeah, but that's basically it. I know it wasn't the most exciting video and it probably wasn't the most DIY or easy to follow, but hopefully you did get something out of this video. I kind of just wanted to you know film the process like i do with everything else on the car sometimes people find it helpful anyways thank you guys for watching i know it wasn't the banger we expected earlier in the video um but i will have uh you know keep my eye out for an e90 or e92 m3 pretty soon here i'm really hoping i find something so with all that being said thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace